The simplest and therefore lowest cost Sound of London devices are the Blue Bib, the Blue Bob 1, and the Blue Bob 2. These are simple Blue Link I.O. expanders, and they're useful if you need to add analog inputs or outputs to your system at ultra low cost. The Blue Bob 1 and Blue Bob 2 have identical functionality. The only difference is their size. The Blue Bob 1 is half rack, the Blue Bob 2 is full rack. For that reason, from here forward, I'm just going to refer to either device as Blue Bob. The Blue Bib and Blue Bob are identical in their two key factors, DSP and networked audio. They both have no DSP, and they both use Blue Link for networked audio. The only difference between the two is that the Blue Bib has eight analog mic line inputs, whereas the Blue Bob has eight analog line level outputs. Both are functionally similar to the Blue 120, another Blue Link I.O. expander, but they cost significantly less than the Blue 120 because they don't have card slots for custom I.O., an LCD screen, conditional logic processing, an Ethernet port, an RS-232 serial port, or GPIO ports. Since there are no Ethernet or serial ports, and since Blue Link ports, of course, are audio only, this implies that the Blue Bib and Blue Bob are completely non-communicative devices. You cannot program them with a computer, and you cannot directly control or monitor them using any controller. If those things are critical for your installation, you should use the Blue 120 instead. Blue Bibs and Blue Bobs are set up using physical dip switches and buttons located directly on the device. Let's go through an example. Let's say I have a system whose sources consist of six mics and three iPods. The destinations consist of two sets of simple analog powered speakers. So I need a 12 by four SoundWeb London system. A system containing a blue 50 and a blue bib fits that requirement like a glove. The powered speakers would obviously be connected to the four analog outputs on the blue 50. And let's say mics A, B, C, and D are connected directly to the four analog inputs on the blue 50 meaning the other two mics and the three iPods would need to be connected to the blue bib. The blue bib's front panel buttons allow you to adjust the mic preamp gain and phantom power settings of each channel individually. These buttons allow you to select a channel for editing. These buttons allow you to adjust the preamp gain setting for the selected channel. These numbers light up to indicate the current gain setting of the selected channel. This button allows you to apply 48 volts of phantom power to the selected channel. These orange LEDs indicate which channels have phantom power turned on, and these LEDs turn green or red to indicate signal presence or clipping, respectively. Please note that there is a way to password protect these front panel buttons, basically by pressing and holding certain things. It's all detailed in the Blue Bib installation guide. Once you've set up the front panel buttons, you just need to use the dip switches for Blue Link channel assignment. The Blue Bib dip switches assign audio onto Blue Link in predefined blocks of eight consecutive channels. For example, when all dip switches are in the up position, this input gets assigned to Blue Link channel 1, and this input goes to Blue Link channel 2, and this goes to Blue Link channel 3, etc. But if you move the very last dip switch down, then this input will now go to Blue Link channel 9, and this goes to Blue Link channel 10. This one goes to 11, this one goes to 12, etc. For your convenience, we've printed this helpful diagram on the top of the Blue Bib chassis. So in this case, I just need to choose a block containing channels lower than 49, since I'm sending these eight channels to a Blue 50, which has the 48 channel Blue Link restriction. Let's arbitrarily choose this block, channels 33 through 40. So I just need to set up the physical dip switches as shown in the diagram and I'm finished with the blue bib. It's now taking eight channels of analog audio, applying preamp and phantom power to some of them, converting them to digital, and inputting them onto blue link channels 33 through 40. At this point, to make my system functional, I would just need to make sure the blue 50 is receiving channels 33 through 40, which of course requires the use of a Windows-based PC running our software. Once I've done that, the Blue Bib audio will be present within the Blue 50, where it can be processed alongside everything else.
The blue bob works the same as the blue bib, except you're dealing with line level outputs, so there are no front panel controls for phantom power or preamp gain, and therefore it costs even a little bit less. However, there is still a simple but useful signal presence LED per channel. This verifies that audio is exiting the analog output. So if the previous system had, for example, 12 powered speakers instead of 4, I could supplement that system with a blue bob. I would just need to add the additional programming within the blue 50. Assign the audio sends onto any 8 channel block other than channels 33 through 40. And then set up the physical dip switches on the blue bob to receive that block. Let's go through another system example. You need to build a teleconferencing system whose sources consist of eight mics, which need to communicate with remote callers over an analog phone line. You also have four stereo auxiliary input wall plates for people to be able to connect things like iPods or laptop audio, and one Bluetooth to analog receiver, so people can wirelessly stream audio from their Bluetooth devices into the system. That means 18 analog inputs are needed, as well as a telephone hybrid. The system's destinations consist of two powered speakers, one set of low-impedance stereo headphones, and a recording device which has four analog inputs. That means eight analog outputs are needed. So you need to build an 18x8 Soundweb London system with one telephone hybrid and with the ability to AEC process eight of the 18 inputs. There are multiple ways to achieve this, but the lowest cost route would be using a Blue 102 and a Blue Bib. The Blue 102 gives you 10 of the 18 analog inputs, all 8 of the analog outputs, the one telephone interface, all the DSP you'll need, and 8 channels of AEC processing for the 8 mics. And the Blue Bib gives you the 8 other inputs. There you have it. There's your low-cost 18x8 conferencing system with a telephone connection and AEC. And remember, the Blue 102 has floating AEC, which means any of the 18 inputs can be AEC processed. So it really doesn't matter where you physically connect the 8 mics. If you wanted to, you could connect them to the Blue Bib, transmit their signal via Blue Link into the Blue 102, and AEC process the mics there. One last note. If you wanted to, you can simply connect a Blue Bib directly to a Blue Bob, give both devices identical dip switch settings, and you've got yourself an 8-channel digital audio snake, no computer needed. Or you could even connect 30 blue bibs to 30 blue bobs, and you've got yourself a digital audio snake carrying well over 200 channels of audio on a single Cat5e cable. In systems such as this one, where multiple blue bibs are being used, it's important that each blue bib has a unique dip switch setting, otherwise they will conflict with each other. However, the same is not true of the blue bob. So let's say you have eight mics and you need to split each mic three ways. Get one blue bib, three blue bobs, set up all four devices with identical dip switch settings, and you now have a three-way splitter for eight mics.